Who here, by a show of hands, has seen the movie Life of Pi and remembers the scene at night with the whale? Great. One of my most memorable experiences during my time at sea was when a pod of dolphins was guiding the bow of our ship into the sunset. The pod tracked us into the night, and like the whale in Life of Pi, their body seemed illuminated as they were triggering defensive reactions from thousands of bioluminescent plankton. The possibility of this experience becoming nothing but myth is severely real. My talk to you today is not just about trash in general, but rather about what happens to plastic pollution once it's broken down by naturally occurring events once it can no longer be seen by the naked eye. Indeed, plastic trash becomes invisible. And so why should we care if it disappears? We don't see this trash when we're out on a cruise or sailing or at the beach. It doesn't affect us, right? Wrong. Microplastics negatively impact our lives and will continue to do so until we solve this problem. One of the reasons why I chose to come to Wellesley College was because I was told that no matter what I decided to study, no matter what major I pursued, the administration would encourage and support my decision to study abroad for a full year. I desperately wanted to gain new cultural perspectives. I wanted to go on a grand adventure that would equip me with new experiences that I would be able to take forth once my time at Wellesley was complete. And so I was flipping through some applications sophomore year, and my mom asked me, Sophia, where do you want to go abroad? I decided that I was going to split my year up into two parts. I would be studying German and psychology in Berlin in the spring. But where was I going to set sail to in the fall? Set sail. It doesn't sound like such a bad idea. I've always been passionate about the sciences, and I also love music and the arts. I like being hands-on and getting creative. I'm from the Sunshine State, but I don't just love the beach. I love the ocean. One of my professors suggested that I check out C Semester in Woods Hole, SEA standing for C Education Association. I was hooked by this once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I signed on. In the fall of 2014, my shipmates and I became the first Global Oceans Program, Class 255. We sailed from Barcelona to Gran Canaria, conducting scientific research along the way. One of the twice-daily procedures that we did was collecting surface water samples, both at midnight and at noon. And then we took these samples and filtered 500 milliliters for the plastic concentrations that we were destined to find. This was done by staining the water with rose bengal, a fluorescent stain that allows one to distinguish inorganic from organic matter. And then this was filtered through paper and analyzed underneath a microscope. To give you a little more background, currents flow into the Mediterranean Sea through the Strait of Gibraltar. They flow counterclockwise, picking up trash and other pollutants along their way from terrestrial landscapes via coastal zones. They continue flowing counterclockwise past Barcelona and Mallorca and back through the strait into the North Atlantic Ocean. In the northern hemisphere of the North Atlantic, we have a huge gyre, which is essentially a whirlpool. And what's happening is this whirlpool is like a giant waste bin. There's a new phenomenon and it's the formation of a plastic island within this gyre. That is why it was so crucial for us to take these samples. Our samples averaged 84 pieces of microplastics for each 500 milliliters that we filtered. 500 milliliters is no larger than your average water bottle that you would get at the supermarket. Our largest count was 216 pieces. And this is egregious considering that our sampling locations were completely random. Not only were we thinking about these concentrations, we were also thinking about the delirious effects that they have 
on these environments. And so this experience and research instilled in me firsthand the urgency with spreading this knowledge in the hopes of reducing environmental degradation. Think about how one water bottle can break into thousands of pieces. So back to my original question, why should we care? How does this affect us? The process by which persistent fat insoluble materials increase in concentrations across food webs is drastic, especially when these materials are resistant to decomposition. And so what essentially happens is those plankton that I was telling you about earlier that bioluminesce, they are some of the biggest consumers that eat these microplastics. They're eaten by smaller fish, and then larger fish eat them, which are ultimately manifested in large marine animals, such as dolphins. And so the marvel that we witnessed that night could quite possibly become nothing more than a memory, never to be experienced by future generations. Not only do we need to be concerned about the extinction of species, we also have to consider the effects that these manifestations of plastic concentrations have in fish populations, which are consumed by none other than us. And so what essentially is happening is we're eating fish that have microplastics within them, but we're not just eating the plastics, we're also consuming chemicals and pathogens that these plastics pick up as they are circulated throughout aquatic habitats. Indeed, hazardous chemicals are further released and toxins in our bodies are further released upon eating these plastics. And this is horrifying considering that 85% of fish populations caught are consumed by humans. Some countries rely on fish for 25% of animal protein intake. And on the global scale, 3 billion people rely on marine resources and biodiversity. How does this affect us, though, on the economic scale? What are the impacts? Globally, the market value of marine resources and industries is $3 trillion each year. $3 trillion. That's 5% of global GDP. Plastic pollution alone costs developing and industrialized nations $1.27 billion each year in threats to fishing, shipping, and tourism. Marine environments support jobs in the economy and they supply food. And sustainable fisheries are dependent on the health and cleanliness of our oceans. We depend on our oceans for things that we don't even think about, like the air we breathe and, and, um, and other things as well, like ingredients in our medicines. We can implore marine protected areas and reserves, and we can also establish annual maximum sustainable fishing yields, but all of these efforts are in vain unless we put a stop to human pollution. One of the key steps to improve this situation can be achieved through education. Of course, education begins in the classroom, which is why it's both essential, empowering, and crucial. Incentivizing rather than punishing or lecturing is another key step to evoke changes in behavior. Give the people what they want, an incentive, and make that want a solution to the problem. International diplomacy is also essential in handling these issues, as perfectly exemplified by the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Goal 14, entitled Life Below Water, promotes the sustainable use of our oceans, seas, and marine resources. The first of 10 targets under this goal is to significantly reduce pollution, not only through prevention, but by cleaning up that which already exists, the pollution that already exists in our oceans. Our oceans compose over 75% of Earth's surface and 97% of Earth's water. 
These percentages are destined to increase with rising sea levels due to global warming. Striving to enhance environmental integrity must be a priority that is taken on by all individuals in order for us to combat our bad habits and decisions. Moreover, understanding dynamic food webs allows us further insights to tackle these impending challenges. Only then can we protect and preserve our earth. Education, prevention, the need to clean. These three save us the big bucks when it comes to ameliorating these issues, some of which cost individuals their livelihoods. The marine environments and future of our economies are undeniably interlinked. We are the ones responsible for our actions. The future of our Earth is truly in our hands.